Hi, my name is Jody Gerritsen. I'm the Executive Director of the Support, Advocacy, and Resource Center, commonly known as SARC. One of our programs is a Crime Victim Service Center, where we serve victims of many different crimes, one of them being gang violence. That's what our program is going to be about today. You're going to learn a lot about how to recognize gangs, how people are recruited into gangs, and how to prevent gang violence in our community. With me today are Jesse Campos from Ferme, and also Juan, a youth who's going to talk to us about his experience and involvement. And so we'll learn a great deal and really welcome you to the show and hope you enjoy it. So if we can start with you, Juan, and tell me a little bit about your history and your past. Um, like, what do you want to know? Like, how What type of involvement have you had or affiliation with gangs in your life? Like how I started with gangs? Sure. Um, well, I just, because I started smoking weed, and like those guys that smoked, like, gang, provided me with it. Mm -hmm. They were gang affiliated, and I don't know. I just started being a gangster. It was cool, but nah. And then um, I just started kicking it with them a lot, like hanging out around with them. Started skipping school a lot, and I just started hanging around with them, and I just became a gangster out of nowhere. Like they didn't ever force me to do anything. I just did it on my own will. How old were you? I was like. Between 13, I was like 12, mm -hmm. I was 12. How old were the other ones that gave you the marijuana? They were um, like 19, 20. Mm, okay. And did you, um, did your life change a lot once you started hanging around them and, and joining than it used to be before? Like what yeah. type of changes happened? Like my family, like my relationship with my parents. Mm -hmm. It was like all messed up. Like they didn't even trust me or nothing. Like I don't know. It was, and I feel weird being around them because you know, like they didn't even trust me or nothing. Mm -hmm. So why would I be around them? It was, like they didn't even really like me. And then my family got all messed up. My uncles, like my aunts, like like they stayed coming to my house. And yeah. So did you? Were you able to stay living with them? Yeah, I'm still living with my parents. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have siblings? Yeah, um, two brothers and one sister. And did it affect your relationships with them as well? Well, nah, because what I was doing, my brothers are doing now, you know? Oh, okay, they're still involved. Yeah, they're, still, they're, they're younger, and that's the age when I was really messing up too, like their age. Mm -hmm. They're younger than you? Mm, they're younger than me. Oh, okay. Did you help get them involved? No. Yeah. I didn't even teach them nothing. I would just, like, do drugs in front of them. Like, I would, like, talk to them about gangsters. Like, I didn't want them to be a gangster. When they were gangsters at first, I would get mad at them. I would be like, nah, you ain't gonna be a gangster. Mm -hmm. But then, I, I don't know where I just be like, you know what? Let them be what they want. Okay, I just have one more question for you before we switch over to Jesse. Um, with not wanting your siblings to be gangsters, how come you wanted that for yourself? I don't know, because I didn't really know what being gangster was all about. Mm -hmm. okay. I thought it was just going to be, you know, something fun, but mm -hmm. nah, it's not. Okay, which later I think we'll talk a little bit more about that. Thank you. Jesse, can you go ahead and... Uh, really introduce yourself more fully in terms of your past and your history and, and about Fermi and give us some information. Sure, um, as the same, almost the same uh, story as Juan. At an early age I started doing drugs, but a little earlier than that, I was sort of doing drugs when I was nine years old, 10 years old, um, introduced by a family member. Um, and then I got really involved because where we lived, it was a more the east uh, portion of town and mm -hmm. all my friends were already involved all my friends were, were were doing things that they're not supposed to get in trouble by the law or whatnot so I, I just wanted to be a part of them mm -hmm. and and so that basically what happened become a part of the gang and stuff like that was was I guess the norm for us growing up that's um, what you knew yeah and then mm -hmm. uh, getting uh, getting uh, picked on you know from at at uh, bus stops and stuff like that I, I just needed some someone to protect me someone to 
to be around me and and that was that was the the call i guess the answer for my uh bullying at a young mm -hmm. age mm -hmm. and uh so there you go that was that happened so knowing that and growing up in in, in the city that in the portion that i was at i knew that there needed to be something uh, as time goes on and growing up and really looking uh, i was a drug addict and alcoholic um, really was, I could be in a packed room, and, and a lot of these guys can relate to that, being in a packed room, but yet feeling lonely inside, yet mm -hmm. feeling not accepted, or feeling, uh, what is really my calling or purpose in life? And I thought the gang life and the partying and all that stuff was it, but it really isn't. Um, so, uh, in 1995 is really when I started thinking, I actually got jumped. And after that, when I got jumped, I was hurting pretty bad, and my mind was like, man, is this worth it? Is this worth the pain, the agony, the frustration, um, is this worth the loneliness that I feel? Um, is this worth all that? And it, and it really what isn't and wasn't. Um, so uh, after trying to change and getting out of it, um, I really wanted something um, that is a need and to fill that gap in the community, which a lot of, a lot of individuals see Juan or, or, or they look at the portfolios of his past but never look at the portfolios of their future. Mm -hmm. um, they always label them as what they've done in the past, uh, uh, unsuccessful in school, um, rebellious, um, gang affiliated, uh, never responsible, uh, a follower, not a leader. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I look at it different. I, I, I don't look at their past because I had a past and people have told me that I'll never live beyond 21 or, or never be successful. Uh, and, and I like to say, well, look at me now, you know. Mm -hmm. But the situation is, it just needed somebody there to tell me, you are somebody. There's greatness inside you. You are a leader. And when I met Juan, he was at the juvenile detention center. And I told Juan, just exact that, Juan, you're a leader. Mm -hmm. And you can change. And there's greatness inside you. And he, at first he was like, what do you mean? You know, I, I, what is that? Because that was foreign language to him. Nobody told him that before, mm -hmm. you know. And, and uh, I love Juan, and I love his brothers, and I love the guys. I love the, 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 I love the guys that we serve. And FEDERMAN is an acronym called Finding, Impact, and Redirecting Gangs Through Mentorship and Education. And what we do is, is uh, knowing the need in the community, we go out and we try to mentor these kids and young adults. Uh, we, we do curriculum with them, kind of behavioral curriculum that engages their, their triggers of, of uh, reoffending their, their, their violence or, or going back into jail, going back to juvenile or doing that stuff. We, we try to help them with any resource we can. We have a career development program that we're starting. We're looking and talking with the Pasco School District right now and some teachers are starting our own academic uh, curriculum for junior high and high school kids. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to, to do what we can um, to help these kids that were just like me. What are you seeing? Uh, the landscape in the Tri Cities right now with gangs. The, there is a, a, a there's a at a moment when when uh, when uh, the police uh, chief and the police department put their many police stations. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. a, a lot of the there's a, a big crime going on at that time, and gang violence, and it kind of suppressed them into their homes. N now a lot of the gangs were partying outside of the house, and and and, and it was it was a a a show, it was out in the public what they were doing. So now the mini stations came in, kind of suppressed them back into their little cubby holes, you can call it. Mm -hmm. But yet, I always knew that it was a like a melting pot, it was a steam cooker. Uh, eventually it's gonna still happen. And a lot of times, a lot of us, you know, I've been asked this question, do we have a gang problem? Do we really have a gang problem in Tri-Cities? Mm -hmm. Well, to answer that, just last October, I had a, a, taken a, a student into my office and three guys seen him and jumped him and stabbed him right in front of me. That was not in the news. That was not recorded. Um, another of our mentors got jumped at the, in June of last year, crushed his skull, five, seven titanium plates in his head. That was not in the news. That was not recorded. This individual got uh, Juan. He got uh, um, violated. This was past couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And that was not in the news. That was not recorded. There's a lot of things that are happening in the community, and if you're not within the community, you will not know what's happening in the community. A lot of us have our own lives, a lot of us have our own worlds that we go around, mm -hmm. and, but, and really there is a problem continuing here, and we're losing a lot of our young people. We're losing a lot of our young kids, and not only that, our young adults as well. Mm -hmm. um, so 
we, there is a huge need. There, there is a huge need, and there, and there is still a problem, an active going problem here in the Tri-Cities. Well, and from your perspective, and, and obviously you know that there's, there's gangs in the community, but from your perspective, how prevalent from what you've seen and the amount of people that you've interacted with, how prevalent is the problem? About gang? Yeah, do you think that there's, do, are there a lot of people involved in gangs? Yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a, but the good thing is that there's a lot of, well, no, there's not a lot of gang, like, how can I say? So, the, the, so the, the, what you're trying to say, the, not. the bigger, larger mm -hmm. of, of the organization, is, is there, there's differences. There's, there's Sudanians called Southerners, Northanians called Northerners, which are mm -hmm. two different sets, and they go the rivalries. What well, he's saying that the Southerners are, are larger a set in the Tri-City area, and the, and the other organizations are, are a little bit more smaller. So there's not a really uh, a, a, an outbreak of a war or, or what you call violence out there, but there is still mm -hmm. uh, on that violence out there. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and now there, there's, there's little smaller sets that are coming up in more bigger, um, different, different types of gangs. <laughs> He said in a name, which is, is there's Crips coming mm -hmm. out, and that that are are getting more involved now. Just recently, mm -hmm. uh, so now we're seeing the the increase uh, of Northanios, which there were a smaller group. Now they're becoming more bigger. Uh, now we're seeing more Crips and Bloods are coming up and, and, and rising up right now as we speak. So that's what he was saying. As far as mm -hmm. I just wanted to. Yeah, no, I got it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's what you're saying. He goes, right now, mm -hmm. the Sudan population is probably more than than any other organization, but now they're coming up, and now you can probably mm -hmm. so it's kind of suppressing, mm -hmm. like, so there's not as much inter gang um, violence because the larger one is able to suppress the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. But now they're coming up. Now they are. I think that a lot of people find of interest because we just don't necessarily know. You know, you're mentioning the different types of names. Could you could you give a little bit more information on the different types of gangs um, in terms of what would, like how would you, could you recognize somebody that, or what are signs you might see from someone from the different types of gangs and are there um, activities or behavior specific to different types of gangs? You know, whatever type of information you could tell us about the different gangs. Well, there, there are, again, there's two major sets that, that are involved. It's, it's the Sudanio, which is Southerners, mm -hmm. and Northanio, uh, which is no Northerners. Sudanios were blue. Um, that's their color. Um, mm -hmm. So, you, And the number they use is the alph alphabet. The 13th number is M. Mm -hmm. So uh, so you, you, you'll see an M or three dots. Or, or you see a, a number of 13, or you see the color blue, um, that's mm -hmm. a southerner. For northerners, you see uh, they use the N, um, which is the 14th um, uh, uh, alphabet uh, mm -hmm. letter, and, and, then, and you use red, um, you use uh, the number 14 as well. So those are just basic knowledge of what those two gangs. Now you look at Bloods and Crips, Crips are blue, mm -hmm. and, and, and Bloods also are, blue? yeah. And then, and uh, bloods are red. Now the blood, the bloods and Crips are prominently African American or white, mm -hmm. um, and then the Sudanese and Northanians are prominently Latinos. Oh, okay. Now, if this will sound probably very naive because it is, um, when people see in the community and might be like, oh, you know, I, I kind of know how to recognize someone, and I think this person is gang affiliated or whatnot. Does it make any difference on how that person should be responding? You know, if I'm walking down the street and and you know, do I do I respond differently? Do I go the other way? Do I intentionally try to be friendly to that person? Do I okay. just be the same as anybody else? Back in the day when I was growing up in the '80s and, mm -hmm. and early '90s, um, you can tell, you can identify what a gang member is. Nowadays, you can't. Mm -hmm. um, not nowadays, you, you see kids wearing basketball shorts uh, and and red shoes. Um, because they're like the Chicago Bulls, mm -hmm. um, but they're not gang affiliated. Mm -hmm. um, and also, but the, the, the trick part is that some gang members wear the same thing and they're actually claiming. So how can you distinguish the two? You really can't, nowadays you really can't distinguish the two. Um, but uh, I, I guess um, a lot of people like the intimidation factor. Mm -hmm. And if you see them doing any kind of criminal activity or you see uh, three or more wearing the same color, um, and and uh, they're not doing too good at like bullying kids or, mm -hmm. or, or graffitiing on walls. Okay, I would say yes, that's a gang member, mm -hmm. that's a gang. 
um, just try to uh, deviate yourself from that situation and, and walk the other way. Um, one thing that they do is they like intimidation and fear. So if you act as scared or you're, or you're fearful, uh, most likely you'll be a target. Mm -hmm. um, so what I would say, if you see somebody, turn around and walk away quietly or avoid the situation. Again, two or three or more. Um, but if you see an individual bouncing a basketball wearing all red, it doesn't mean he's a, a right. gang member. He's probably a, a guy that uh, goes to school at Kamaikin and he doesn't go basketball practice, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that, that's something that uh, you, you can't really tell anymore. But again, I guess the greatest flag is if you see three or more individuals together wearing the same color, uh, wearing identifying uh, symbols of, of, of gang, then I would try to deviate myself. And, and if they are trying to intimidate you personally, it's just better to walk away than to say anything back. Yeah, and maybe report it to local police officers. Do they whatnot. do like to have that information? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could you explain a bit, Juan, about what the, the culture was like um, being involved with these people in terms of what type of, you know, there's a lot of talk about respect within, when, in gangs, and how, how were, let me be more direct, how were females treated in your experience, in, in that were in the gangs or not in the gangs? What With type of roles did the females? Females? Yeah. When, when I was growing up, like, I don't really know any female gangsters, because okay. gangs, like, they wouldn't let girls be in them, because, you know, like, and a guy can easily just, you know, hit a girl and she'll get knocked out or whatever, it's, you know, beat up. So, like, the homies would be like, you know, why hit a girl? You know, because they don't hit girls. We don't, well, I don't hit girls personally. Mm -hmm. And the girl, you know, tries to bang on me. And, like, I'm not going to hit her. So, when I was growing up, you know, like, females really, really weren't really gangsters. There was a lot of gangsters that were girls, but um, how they treated me, they treated me good, they treated me, you know, with respect. Like, if I just gave, if I, you no, know, like, show them respect, they were cool, like, no respect their house, like, not mm -hmm. steal anything from them, or whenever I'll see their parents, just say hi to them, you know, like, respect them, you know? And um, what else? How 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 else was like? Like, I just changed, you know. Mm -hmm. Were females in general not very well respected by people involved in gangs? Uh, so, like, for in general, were females maybe looked down upon more from people involved in gangs? Were they looked more as a commodity, more yeah. as someone to use and get what you want from them? Well, not. Not female, like not gangsters. Mm, okay. Like, cause I, I don't know. Like, how about I, regular females? Like yeah, regular reg girls. Yeah, like regular fe girls. Yeah, but not gangster girls. Mm, okay. Like girls that were gang affiliated, and I, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't talk to them, because I knew they'd just be around. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just, you know, go to regular girls, like girls I meet up at school or something, and just talk to them. Okay. What has your experience been and from what you've seen in terms of the difference in, in culture, like with different genders? There, there is a, like you said, there's, uh, there's a minimal of girls that were involved in gangs. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, nowadays there's a lot of uh, involvement of, of females in part of gangs. And now they're, they're actually claiming gangs, they're, they're throwing up the gang sets. Uh, there are actually girl female gangs out there now mm -hmm. um, that, you know, back in the, when it, mid 80s you never heard anything like that you mm -hmm. know but now that they are and uh, talking with, with some of the police officers in KPD they actually said that there's some females that are high ranking in gangs right now mm -hmm. uh, so there have been involvement with gangs now as far as a, a commodity and as far as being used um, those are, are more of the I guess the wannabes, the, the mm -hmm. cliques that, mm -hmm. that admire or want to have a, a thug boyfriend or per mm -hmm. se those girls sometimes be used uh, because some gang members can see it as free lunch type mm -hmm. of a thing. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to use the free lunch until the ticket is expired type of a thing. Um, but other than that, a lot of gang guys uh, uh, don't want a, a gang girl or a gang girl that's been involved. So they, they go and try to date other females that are not uh, associated okay. themselves. One thing that um, I've 
heard in a variety of trainings, I'm curious if it's this way in the Tri-Cities, is that gangs have become much more involved in exploiting um, females for, for profit because they're reusable commodity in that way. Do you see that happening here locally too? Uh, locally, we've, we've talked to a couple of females that, that have done that and, and experienced that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, for reason of is you get, you know, now in, in, the, in the past, you didn't get a lot of time for pimping out a girl, or you didn't mm -hmm. get a lot of time for using a girl. Uh, you, you, you just, you just, you don't get a lot of time for that. And mm -hmm. now, unfortunately, it wouldn't be a problem. You know, now some use violence towards females or use their families as collateral. If you don't, mm -hmm. if you don't do this, you know, your, your sister, your brother, your family might get involved. Um, but what I've seen throughout the valley is, is a lot of, unfortunately, there's some girls that want to mm -hmm. uh, for the gang. And, and, and that is, is, is frightening. That is mm -hmm. when a female is, is willing to do that. Now, mm -hmm. there are some that have been forced and some guys that they say you better or do whatever. Um, so there's two of the types of females that are out okay. there doing that. Could you, um, for the, the interest of time, we might not be able to go in great depth, but could you explain to me the different recruitment methods to get people involved into the gang? Oh, well, seduction is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, they, they go to the party, they see all of the, the, the big glamour, nice cars, um, all the beer and alcohol you can drink, all the drugs you can have, all the money that some gangsters, uh, gang members are flaunt because they, they're they're dope dealers, mm -hmm. so a lot of young kids. Uh, that seduction, they, 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 they. Oh my gosh, I want to be a gangster. I want to be a part of that. Um, so they, 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 they do them. They, they, mm -hmm. you know, they use that method of recruitment. Uh, another portion is is uh, obligation. You know, uh, I'm gonna do this for you. Uh, for instance, like um, Juan here, you got got some weed and stuff like that. So that's a part of a seduction. You know, mm -hmm. time of giving free free weed. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to be a part of that. Um, another portion, like, like like I said, is uh, obligation. Uh, we gave you some some uh, something. We gave you protection. Maybe some gang see a guy getting picked on in school, mm -hmm. uh, so they help the guy and and throw the bully away, whatever, or beat up the bully, and say, okay, now you're part of our gang. So now you're obligated because we protected you. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a lot of co cohesion. Um, a lot of relatives. You know, and generational. There's a lot of things that 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 uh, I like the the movie Gran Torino. It, it mm -hmm. gives it gives a great uh, example of of a cousin wanting the kid to be involved, and so he gets now his cousin. There's other friends that come and, and threaten him to do so. So th there are a lot of, and unfortunately, again, like I like I mentioned before, there's there's people are just at will. They just want to become it, maybe because they don't have an identity, mm -hmm. um, family structure is not there. Um, so they want to find a spot in, in, in the world somewhere, and gangs give them the opportunity to be that somebody. Okay, thank you. Juan, can you think of anything that, at that time when you were given weed that first time, back then, was there anything that could have been done differently in your life, either um, while you were being raised, or anything that could have made a difference to where you wouldn't have made those choices then? Yeah, nah, smoke weed. Well, not not just that so much, I guess, but in terms of wanting to be involved in a gang life, were there was there something that could have been different where you would have not wanted to do that? If I would have never skipped school, yeah. Because otherwise, I would have never gone to the guy's house. Okay, so if there was someone more watching your attendance yeah. and holding you accountable to school, would have made a big difference. Mm -hmm. Can you think of any other examples? Did you have a, a lot of structure at home? Nah, I just get punished a lot. Like mm -hmm. when I do bad things, because mm -hmm. I was a troublemaker growing up too. Mm -hmm. Like at school. Okay, so the attendance is huge. So keeping kids mm -hmm. in school would mm -hmm. be something that you think would make a difference. You know, if we're looking at how do we help reduce future kids from being involved, that would be something that would have mattered. Is there anything else that would have really made a difference for you that you can think of? Like if you wanted to say, hey, if you would just do this, we'd have less kids in gangs. Mm, not just, I don't know. That's okay. Attendance, that's a great one yeah. to know. And that's something our community is working on. I um, think that's the, that's be the best one I got. Okay. Stay in school. Thank you. Stay in school. See, you got it down. <laughs> do you have any um, from other experiences that you've seen on what makes a difference or what could make a difference from someone yeah. making that choice? I, I think that uh, what, Mentorship. 
Um, I think mm -hmm. some, having that somebody to really look look and accept them for who they are. Um, Juan is a great example. When I met him and uh, mentoring him a little bit and, and tell him how great he is, um, I got a call from his school, from his principal, saying that Juan never went to school. Before this year, how many times have you gone to school? For Before this year? I don't know. Not a lot. <laughs> so he, he, the principal called me. Juan never came to school, mm -hmm. you know, and had Fs in, in the school. And uh, just recently, his principal called me and said, man, he goes, Juan has changed. He's perfect attendance, and uh, he has A's and B's in, in school right now. That's awesome. So uh, I, I think mentorship and, and really, again, um, giving the guys some inspiration to change and, and really accepting for who they are. Again, I, I, you know, I might be biased or whatnot, but mm -hmm. I believe all these kids are great kids. They're mm -hmm. just uh, different approaches and different methods. I think it can work for these kids. And so really what he's saying about the attendance really goes in with you too because then if a kid's at school, there's at least some mentorship through teachers or yeah. principal or Absolutely. whatever relationships they may make. Absolutely. Uh, myself, Mr. Levitt uh, from uh, New Horizons have been working really closely with Juan and I mean, uh, the principal there is truly trying to work with Juan and, and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I'm like his, almost like his pops at some times because he calls me when he gets in trouble and I go over there to school and and if he's wearing something that he's not supposed to, mm -hmm. I'll go and take him shirts or buy him shirts and take it over there. So working together, I think mm -hmm. we can definitely change the kids' lives. Do you find that you actually like that, um, this might sound odd, but if, it, if, if he gets called because you're in trouble, because it, you know someone cares, because yeah, they're feel showing weird. up? Yeah, I feel weird when they call him, like, because mm -hmm. sometimes they call him, and then I'd be like, what are you guys calling him? Like, for real, I feel weird when they call you. And it's like, bother you. I feel like they're bothering you. But does it feel almost kind of good that someone cares enough to make a call? Yeah. And that somebody shows up? Yeah, that feels good. And then when this guy shows up, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, this was guys, damn. This fool will call him, like, because one time, they owe me short shirt. No, I had a blue shirt on that I couldn't really wear. No, I, I couldn't wear at school. And they, why well, I called them, well, I don't remember. I think they called them or I called you. And he comes with like four, three shirts. Mm -hmm. He gives them to me the like, here. And I was like, oh, I only wanted one shirt, but thanks. <laughs> and I, I would bet that you don't feel bothered when you get called, do you? No, I love, like I said, I love these kids. And these kids are like my kids. So. Mm -hmm. I think in any moment, any time they call me, I mean, he's called me late at night. One time he called me like at one or two o'clock in the morning. Can you get me right home? I was like, no, I ain't gonna get home in bed. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm glad that they call me though. I, I, I'm Absolutely. glad, you know, and, and, it, and I hope they do call me. And he texts me every day. You know, he tries to when he doesn't lose his phone. He texts me every day and tells me that he's at school and he's doing good. And I always tell him, I try to tell him as much as I can that I'm proud of him. That's great. Well, I think what, is important for people watching to know is we'll have phone numbers put up uh, of SARC and then also of Fermi as well. Mm -hmm. And so if people in the community want to know how to be able to make a difference, get involved, or have, have any questions about their kids or, or anything, it, it's great to call you, right? Absolutely. And so we'll put your phone number up. Absolutely. And I, I really thank you both so much. I know this is a is tough because you shared personal stories and especially at your age, what a, what a wonderful job. I mean, I really respect you for doing that. That takes a lot of courage. So thank you. And thank you so much, Jesse. We really appreciate it. No problem at all. Thank you. Again, um, my name is Jody Garrettson. I'm from SARC. Our number is 374-5391. Please call if you ever have questions, concerns, or need any type of support. Thank you.